Welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to talk about Lightroom 4.1. Now, Adobe often releases free updates to Lightroom that include bug fixes, new camera support, and new lens profiles. Lightroom 4.1 includes those as well, but it also includes some new features. So we have a new color panel here in the Lens Corrections panel. We have support for 32-bit HDR files, and we have the ability to output to JPEG in the book module. In addition, the upload to Adobe's Revel service has been moved from the Export dialog to the Publish Services panel in the Library module. So I'm going to give you an overview of these. Here in the Lens Corrections panel, as I mentioned, we have a new color tab. First, it contains the Remove Chromatic Aberration checkbox that we got in Lightroom 4.0 in the Profile panel, so it's just been moved. But now we have these defringe controls. The defringe controls will allow us to fix purple and green fringing, which can be caused by a number of issues. But you'll often see green and purple fringing when you have a backlit subject where the background's blown out, or where you're shooting wide open with a fast lens. So I'm going to zoom in on the plane of focus here and you're going to see the purple fringing as I come forward from the plane of focus, and then green fringing as I move backward from the plane of focus. So these new controls will allow us to fix this. We have an automatic fix with the eyedropper. I'll simply click in the purple, and Lightroom will set the sliders to fix that problem. If I hit the switch on and off and you look at that leaf, you'll see that it's gone just that easy. If it doesn't do a perfect job, or elsewhere in the photo I've got more of an issue, I'll use these sliders to refine the effect. I'm going to take the amount slider to zero and show you that if I hold the Alt to the Option key down, you're going to see that what's in black and gray is where the fix is going to apply. The fact that you're still seeing purple in some of those areas suggests that this amount, which is zero, is not enough. So it's very purple here when I hold the Alt to the Option key down, so I need a higher amount. So I'll slide that just far enough to fix the issue. Now, it's fixed here, but I see a little bit coming out from the edges here. I think that this purple on the leaf was more reddish purple, and this towards the edges is more bluish. So I can modify the range of hues that this affects. What's affected is what's in between these triangles. And if I hold the Alt to the Option key down, I can see in black what's actually affected, and I can verify that it's not fixing this area out here. So I'm going to expand the range of hues. I'll do it holding the Alt to the Option key down so that you can see, as I now go more into the bluish purple, I start to pick up these areas where I still had a problem. So next, I would come to the green fringe, and I would work on that using these sliders. This is actually a, an extremely difficult photo for Lightroom to fix because the green background is the same color as the green fringing. That's just a coincidence. But let me go ahead and show you that if I go ahead and fix this, it does a great job there, but it has created a halo around this leaf. It fixed something that was not a problem around this leaf. In Lightroom 4.1, we now also have, in the Adjustment Brush and Graduated Filter, local defringe control. So I have a defringe slider here. So I'll slide this to negative 100 and paint in this area to undo the defringe fix in that area. So I've got global controls and I've got local controls. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next new feature, which is support for 32-bit HDR files. So I have a scene here that I bracketed the exposures on. So these first three were bracketed exposures. I took them straight from Lightroom into Photoshop and merged them to HDR. That combined all of that information into one file. Now normally in Photoshop, I would then do the tone mapping process in the HDR dialog. And that's a pretty complicated dialog to deal with. Now we don't have to do that. Just merge the exposures and save the file in 32-bit mode. Then, here in Lightroom, you can develop this 32-bit file. So you can do the tone mapping here. So let me go ahead and come up here and show you that even though it looks blown out, even though it looks like I don't have detail in here, this 32-bit file in fact does. I'll take the highlights down, I'll take the shadows up, 
take the blacks up and you can see that I've got all of the information that I had in the combination of those three files and I can adjust it using these very intuitive sliders rather than Photoshop's unintuitive HDR mapping process. And as usual with Lightroom, all of this develop work on the 32-bit file is non-destructive, so I can always change my mind. That's not the case with Photoshop's HDR tone mapping process. Now you can also, of course, develop 32-bit files from other programs such as Photomatix here in Lightroom. Now the new feature that I'm actually most excited about is in the book module, and that's the ability to output to JPEG. So with Lightroom 4.0, we could choose Blurb as the output destination for our book, and we could choose PDF as well. But now we have a JPEG option. So not only does this allow us to send our book to publishers that want JPEGs, but we can use Lightroom's page layouts to design individual JPEGs of photos and text. So for example, here's a one-page book that I built, not because I want a one-page book, but because I like this page layout with these film strip borders, and I simply want to display my photos using this format. So I could now output this to JPEG by clicking on Export Book to JPEG after I choose JPEG here, and email this out to share to people, send it out to have it printed, or I can re-import it back into Lightroom and print it using the print module. So I see this as being particularly powerful with all of these page formats that have text, because there's so much text and type functionality here in the book module that you just don't get in the print module. Now the one limitation that we still have is that we're limited to the shapes of blurb books. Now there is a workaround for this as well. It won't always work, but sometimes it will. So let me go ahead and just show you another layout here. This layout won't work because we can't crop it. But let's say that we were going with this layout here. So photos and then text. If we wanted to crop this to a different shape, all we would have to do is design it here in the book module and then output it as a JPEG, re-import it into Lightroom, and crop it to the exact proportions that we need. Of course, there are multi-page applications for this new feature as well. You could use the book module to design the slides for a slideshow. You've got much more sophisticated layouts here in the book module than you have available in the slideshow module. So you could export your slides as JPEGs, and then you could even re-import them into Lightroom and play them in the slideshow module. Now when you choose Export here to JPEG, you get some different choices. First, under Cover, you have the option to have no cover, which is what I've done here. That's how I got just a one-page book. Then just like with a PDF, you will set the JPEG quality, the color profile, the resolution, and whether you want output sharpening or not. So with Blurb, these decisions are made for you. With JPEG and PDF, you set these yourself. Finally, you'll click on the Export Book to JPEG button, and you'll tell Lightroom where you want to put this folder of JPEGs and what it should be called. Now finally, as I mentioned in the beginning, the upload to Adobe's Revel service, which allows you to share your photos amongst your computers and mobile devices, has moved from the Export dialog into Published Services in the Library module. So here in the Published Services panel, we now have an Adobe Revel published service. You'll click on Setup, and you'll enter the exact same information you would have entered in the Export dialog. Now, published services would take an entire video in itself, but let me just say that it's a great move that it's moved from Export here into published services. What you'll be able to do if you subscribe to the Adobe Revel service is once you've worked some photos here in Lightroom, you can drag them to Adobe Revel, click on a Publish button, and they'll automatically be uploaded to the cloud and then synced with your other computers and mobile devices. Now right now it's only available for the Mac, but I'm looking forward to seeing it on Windows. So that's what's new in Lightroom 4.1. Some nice new features, particularly for a free update.